Hey, what's going on guys? So today I want to show you guys the results of the Malaysian Trumpet Snail Algae Challenge. Now this challenge is going to be across seven days. I like the previous Nerite Snail Challenge uh, to see how much algae they can eat within a week. So I'm adding the MTS snails in the sump uh, of my 54 gallon tank. And this location is where I'm growing my Igazoo 2009 swords. Uh, they don't have any algae eaters in the sump. Because the swords are slow growers, the algae is outgrowing them and outcompeting the swords. I made a very similar a video on my Nerite snail algae challenge a few years back. Uh, just to kind of do a little experience to see how good the Nerite snails are compared to Plecos when it comes to algae eating. And I was really surprised to see a lot of incorrect statements and assumptions on that video. I kind of want to correct some of that assumption because this challenge right now that I want to show you guys is pretty much the same setup as the previous. Yes, I already knew the root cause of what caused the algae. It's really too much light and there wasn't enough plants to outcompete the algae in the tank. The light was outputting around 350 to 400 par at the top and 70 par at the bottom. These swords, they don't really need that much par. Because I was growing the swords in the main tank, for anyone that knows anything about these swords, they're super slow growers, even with CO2, and that's why they take so long to propagate, uh, hence the value. A medium to large plant can range from 100 to 150 per plant, but unfortunately, Algae eaters such as autos and plecos love this type of sword and I've seen them destroy a fully grown sword overnight. So if you can imagine having thousands and thousands of dollars in swords, you know, getting wiped out within maybe like one or two days, that's going to be a sad day. So when I made that Nerite Snow Challenge video, I was trying to think of different alternative methods to help control the algae. Fast forwarding it to today, the same tank set up pretty much you know, the same livestock, probably a little bit more, same light output. And as you can see, the tank is crystal clear with a very few spots of algae here and there. So the main difference here on the tank now versus previously is the type of plants I'm growing on the display and having plecos as an algae eater control. The same exact swords are now growing in the sump and hence the Malaysian Trumpet Snail Algae Challenge. So having algae in the glass wall isn't a bad thing. It's actually good for your tank. So you can have crystal clear water as you can see here and have algae at the same time as you can see in the sump. It's really finding that balance of what can control and eat the algae, and when what you do in terms of feeding and water changes. So now going back to the snail challenge here. So in the sump, I put about 50 plus snails in the tank before there was nothing in the sump, literally just the plants and the light. Now, a little bit of spoiler, I kind of did this challenge on a different sump setup with the same plants, you know, having algae on the leaves, and those trumpet snails took care of those within a few weeks. Within a week or so, the algae did decrease, but it's not going to completely remove everything to be completely spotless. It just takes them a little bit longer than plecos. Now, this video and the previous challenge video just shows you that snails are a great alternative to controlling algae if you can't keep plecos. Now, 100%, I agree that if you can get a pleco in your tank, they will take care of your algae problem, no problem, and much faster than snails. But if you're growing certain plants where you can't have plecos with them, the snails are a great alternative for that. I hope you guys got some sort of entertainment from this video. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, till next time guys, peace.